G'day YouTube, welcome to my channel. During the past three months, I've been recording and uploading a series of GSM decoding videos showcasing some of the basic functionality of GRGSM, which is a software tool set for Linux. In part seven today, we will be covering a topic that is without a doubt one of the hardest tasks to achieve in the realm of GSM decoding, and that is reading SMS messages. But first, I'll take a moment to reiterate something. This video will not show you how to decrypt 2G text messages. I'll only be showing you how to read the SMSs after the decryption process has been undertaken. Go and check out my GSM decryption playlist for more videos on the subject of GSM cracking and deciphering. So with that clarification out of the way, let's proceed with the tutorial. So everybody knows what SMS messaging is, right? It's a pretty iconic feature of 2G communication. It stands for short message service and it provides the capability for two mobile subscribers to exchange brief text messages of 160 characters in length. The SMSC is the infrastructure inside a cellular provider's network that handles the sending, storing, forwarding, and receiving of these messages between mobile phone subscriber handsets. The GSM technical specifications also allow for SMS messages to be sent over GPRS and Edge data connections and additional security options such as Encrypting the text message with WTLS ciphering are also available for operators to configure. We aren't going to need any hardware for this tutorial, excluding a working PC running Dragon OS Linux. For a comprehensive list of the software needed for GSM decoding, please see part one of this video tutorial series. We do need some uh, additional pieces of software which aren't specified in part one. The first is Wireshark, which will help us display GSM data in a human readable format so we can analyze it. The second is T-Shark, which is the command line variant of Wireshark. It will help us conveniently display the decoded SMS text directly from the terminal window. I can't remember if it's installed and included with Dragon OS Linux or not, but it is easy enough to install with APT. The third piece of software we will need is GSM Evil 2. This is optional, but I've lots I've had lots of comments on my videos and countless emails regarding how to get GSM Evil 2 working in Dragon OS Focal X because I believe that it may be broken out of the box. So I have a bonus segment towards the end of this video devoted to GSM Evil 2. So stick around for that, it'll be fun. So let's proceed with the practical segment of the tutorial then, shall we? Inside my home directory here, I have a GSM capture file, which I recorded from my Rogue 2G base station using GRGSM Capture. It contains SMS messages sent between two mobile phones running inside my test environment. If you haven't done so already, we will need to open a terminal window. This is where we'll be running our GRGSM decode commands. And then we can either open up a second terminal window or open up a new tab in the existing terminal window like I have and we run the following command to launch Wireshark and enter your password if prompted. After Wireshark has launched we will return to the first terminal window and decode the combined BCCH SDCCH4 channel on time slot zero with the following command. I'm not going to explain 
this command as I think that we have covered that enough in previous videos. And because I captured this data from a rogue 2G base station running on software defined radio, it has a slightly different network configuration compared to real GSM cellular networks. Yate BTS utilizes a combined BCCH and SDCCH4 channel, which means the broadcast control channel and the standalone dedicated control channels are combined into a single logical channel on time slot zero. So I will just hit enter on that. And we can see the terminal window displaying the raw GSM bursts and Wireshark populating with human readable data for us to analyze. Generally, the method I see most people trying to use to read SMS messages is to simply write the following into the Wireshark filter bar. And hit enter. So we click on either one of these packets. We click on SMS, oh, sorry, GSM SMS TPDU. Double click, sorry. We scroll down. The phone number that sent us the SMS is here at TP originating address. And the actual text contained inside the SMS messages is listed under TP user data. Double click that. And we can see the text message that I sent to myself between my two mobile phones is here. Now, what if I told you that this method is completely wrong and there is a far less clunky and more convenient way to read SMS messages? We are going to utilize Wireshark's command line variant named T-Shark from inside a terminal window to streamline the process of displaying SMS messages extracted from a GSM capture file. If you haven't done so already, we need to open up a second terminal window and we run the following command. This command is a bit of a mouthful. So I will ensure to put it in the description below for you to easily copy and paste. So I'll just hit enter on that. We will enter our password if prompted and we ignore the warning from T-Shark advising us that we are running as root and this is dangerous. Optionally, we can press the enter key a few times. So our text messages are printed neatly in the center of our terminal window. Next, we return to the first terminal window and we run the GSM. We run the GSM, GRGSM decode command once again. And we can see that T-Shark has neatly printed out the SMS text with the sending party telephone number prepended at the beginning. This is a far superior way to extract SMS messages, in my opinion. Now, what if I told you there is even a better way to print out SMS messages for us to read that uses a pretty GUI interface inside a web browser? Sounds pretty good, right? I believe that GSM Evil 2 might be broken in Dragon OS Focal. Therefore, it requires a virtual Python 3.8 environment to be configured. To save you all the hassle of trying to set this up on your own Dragon OS installation, I've uploaded this zip file to Google Drive and I'll put the download link in the description below. So to be very clear, this method will only work on Dragon OS Focal X. If you're using Kali or Ubuntu, you will need to install and configure GSM to a GSM Evil 2 from scratch. 
So we will just proceed to download this zip file from Google Drive and Firefox will store it in the downloads folder in our home directory by default. So we can minimize the browser now. So we browse to our download directory. We double click on GSM evil 2.zip. We press the back button in our file browser to return to the home directory. We highlight, oh, sorry, in the file, file archiver window here, we highlight all the files contained in the zip like so, and we drag them over to our home directory, and then we finally click on copy here. I've written all the instructions within this text document named readme.txt file. Always read the readme file before sending me emails or asking questions in the comment section. Thank you. So we'll just open the readme text document here. And we'll just simply follow the instructions. So the step one is extract the VM, VENV folder, GSM Evil 2.sh, and start GSM2, GSM Evil 2.sh into our home username directory. We've done that already. Step two is we need to make both of the bash scripts executable with this command so we will copy that paste it into our terminal window and hit enter step three is we double click on start underscore gsm evil 2.sh and then finally we click execute And there we have it. That is the web server side of GSM Evil running now. Step four is we need to open our web browser once more. And we simply type localhost into the address bar. But because I want to jump directly to the SMS decoding feature of GSM Evil 2, I will type localhost forward slash SMS instead. Hit enter. And finally, locate the settings panel on the right hand side and enable the SMS sniffer. If the settings panel is not showing, click on the cog icon here. And there we have it. We have launched the GSM Evil 2 web server and enabled the SMS sniffing functionality. GSM Evil 2 is now listening for decoded SMS traffic. So once again, we will return to our first terminal window and run the grgsm decode command for the third and final time. And after a short amount of time, we can see the decoded SMS messages being printed inside the web GUI with some other information like the sending party telephone number and some dates and times. So yeah, that is really, really cool. Obviously the SMS decoding workflow is going to be vastly different if you are working with real GSM data captured from a 2G base station. But due to the subject of intercepting SMS messages being very sensitive from a legal standpoint, I've intentionally made this tutorial ambiguous 
because I do not want to teach my viewers how to eavesdrop on private telecommunications. All the pieces of the puzzle are well documented enough on my channel and it will be entirely up to my viewers, you guys, to piece them all together. I'm uncertain of the future of this video series. I think I have covered most of the topics well enough already. And if I do produce an eighth part, it will probably just be a rambling video about some observations and learnings during my experience with 2G decoding and working with GSM data. Maybe I'll talk about some hardware such as SDRs, antennas and coaxial feed line. So stay tuned for part eight if it ever happens. If not, that will conclude my GSM decoding video series. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.